Hey, what's going on you guys? This is Chad from CWC Technologies. I wanted to show you some of my favorite accessories that I use in the studio here that go with my A6400 or other cameras that you have, whether it's mirrorless or DSLR cameras. But this is my beast that I've been using for a while now since the release. I absolutely love this camera. This is an APS-C size camera, so it's not, it doesn't let in as much light as a full frame camera because the sensor's just a, just a little bit smaller. It does have a 1.5 uh, times crop. So that means if you put a 10 millimeter full frame equivalent lens on it, it's actually gonna be 15 millimeters. And that's why one of the main reasons I'm using this lens, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you some of my favorite accessories that I use in the studio setup here. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing, let's talk about the camera real quick. I absolutely love this camera and there's a couple reasons why. Now I've owned all the Sony A6000 series, the 6000, 63, 64, which is this one, the 65. And the reason that I chose this one over the 6500 is even though this does not have in-body image stabilization, which Sony calls their OSS or optical steady shot, what it does have for me are things that I like better. One is this has an unlimited recording limit, which means after 30 minutes, this will just keep recording. The second thing that I like about this is the menu system is actually now more in line with the Sony a7 III, which I love that camera, and I'll leave a link right here where you can check that one out as well. The menu system is easier to access, and it has a My Favorites menu area, which is something that makes it really easy to just get into quickly. The color science of this camera is also better than any of the other A6000 series. Again, they use the exact same color science as the Sony a7 III, so right out of the gate, it looks incredible. Pro tip, I love to use the PP1 for the picture profile on the camera. It just straight out of camera looks fantastic. There's no more green tint to the Sony images that you get out of this camera. So right out of the gate, you can shoot beautiful video and pictures without worrying about doing too much in post. Now, one good thing with the Sony a6000 series is the fact that you can power this externally. So the first accessory that I want to talk to you about is a power bank. Now I'm using this anchor power bank. You can use multiple different varieties of power banks that you want. I like this one because it's USB-C and also USB type A. Just depends on what you wanna use it for, but because this is a big enough battery bank, I can use this with a lot of other different things like an iPad or your MacBook if you're using the, the newer style with the USB type Cs. Literally, if you combine a nice large power bank with your Sony a6400 camera, you can literally power this as long as your memory card will allow you to. So that's the next best accessory that I like to bring up. Now, I use these sand disks. The reason that I'm gonna recommend this sand disk here is because I've been using these for years and I have never had an issue, knock on wood, with losing data or unrecoverable issues or anything like that. And the way that the prices are so cheap now, you can get this 128 gig for extremely low cost. I'll leave a link down below where you can get yours and this would be the next recommendation for my favorite accessory. Now, what I would highly recommend is you get a white card, and the, or in this case, this is a gray, black, and a white card. Now, the one that I use here is nice. I always leave this on my tripod or wherever I go. I can hang it on my neck. I can put it in my pocket if I'm doing like real estate video type work. So literally, I can pull this card out, like in the beginning of any video, I click on this white balance in whichever video editor that you're using and I can get perfect white balance. Even if your studio lights or the above lights that you're using or even the outdoor lighting is different, then you can use the white balance and it will automatically adjust the Kelvin or the light temperature in the room to match what it should look like. Here's a quick tip for you. If you don't have a white card and you see anything that's actually as close to white as you can get, Go ahead and click on that and that will also do the same thing. So you're really just looking for something white. I use the card because it's easy, it's convenient, it's cheap. I always have it in my camera gear and it works perfect. Now the next thing that we're gonna talk about is lighting. Of course you always wanna have good lighting and that's probably one of the hardest things to do, especially doing YouTube videos like this. So what I'm using here is these Fovatec studio lights. Show them right here for you. These are very inexpensive. I use two of them, so they're both pointing at me basically in an X fashion. So these are my key lights. 
I don't have enough room behind me for a hair light, but I might consider pulling this whole desk out so I can have one behind me just to get the shadow off the wall that you can see here. So another pro tip, if you don't want shadows on your wall, either go away from the wall, so your subject is farther away from the wall to not create the shadow, or to have another light behind you, which will get rid of the shadow effect. So as you can see, if I pull myself farther away, you don't get that shadow effect. So that's the lighting that you can also look at. The next biggest thing is the lens choice. Now the lens choice that I have on this one is the Sigma. This is the 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture. So what that means is, is this lens is a consistent 16 millimeter focal. It doesn't change. So this isn't a telescopic range lens where you can get different view distances. But again, the other nice thing with the Sony a6400 is you can actually control the zoom, which I have set to the down on the directional pad here. So I can then use this as a zoomed lens. So I'm getting the benefit of a 1.4, which is a fast lens. That means it allows more light in and you get that nice blurrier background, the bokeh effect behind you without paying a huge premium to get a lens that has zoom range built into it, like the 16 to 35 or the 24 to 72.8, which can cost over a thousand dollars for them. The lens is nice. It feels good in the hand. You can see the size of the lens. The focus ring on the system feels good. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. It auto focuses extremely fast. With the a6400, this actually has the fastest autofocus of any camera out right now because it's using the same chip as what's in the a9 for your focusing system which allows you to have eye tracking. Even in video, you can track eyes on your pets. So it also has uh, animals and pets eye focus if you're into that sort of thing, but absolutely fantastic. So a couple of accessories that I use for my lens is one of them is going to be this uh, variable ND filter. Now what an ND filter is, this is basically sunglasses for your lens. So if you're ever outside, and it's way overblown, everything is just too bright, you can't see anything, this allows you to change that. Just by rotating this dial, I can allow more or less light into my lens, which then will be able to change what aperture you're using. Now remember, if you're outside, you can adjust, pro tip, you can adjust your aperture or your shutter speed to allow less light in, and that will also compensate. But what you don't get by doing that is you won't get that nice blurry background. So what I can do is, is even in an outdoor bright environment, is I can set my aperture to f1.4, put an ND variable filter on it, crank that up so it does not let as much light in, and I still get that nice creamy background on it. So that's what this will allow you to do. Now one thing with the lens and the filters is, you wanna get yourself a nice lens cleaner. Now I'm just using this cheap one here from Altura right now, but this is nice because this will allow me without touching the lens to get in there and get all the dirt off or any lint that's on there. You always wanna do that right when you're turning your camera on to make sure everything is okay. And then on the other end, you can see that it's got a little bit harder of a surface. So if I really need to get into anything and dig that out. Again, if you guys are the idea of any of these accessories make sure you look down below they'll all be in the description now the next biggest thing is we're going to talk about your audio and i'll leave a link right here where you can check out how i've set up the studio for different audio settings and some of the top features that you want to look at to increase the quality of your videos and i tell you in that and i'll tell you again the number one thing is going to be your audio so i've got a couple of different things that we can do here for audio one i like to use this h1 this is great for a couple reasons this is an external microphone so you're not going to be using your camera source which means you're going to get a better quality input you can put this in your pocket you can use it as a microphone if you're doing interviews. This records fantastic audio sound and it's extremely low cost. There's an, also an H4 if you wanna do multi-track, meaning multiple microphones are plugged into the unit. You can do the same thing with that. This is just the one that I liked. I've been using it for years and it's, it's worked out great. The next thing, if going to use the A6400 is more of a vlogging type setup. So you can see here, it's, it's very small, very light, it's compact. You also have the dead cat here, which blocks out all your wind noise. So you can easily put this on top of your hot or a cold shoe, put it up on your camera, blocks all the wind out. 
Now the good thing with this too is this is passive, meaning there's no battery, you don't have to get any power from your camera. This just goes directly into your camera, you turn it on and you don't have to worry about changing battery. So that's also a, a big positive with this one. And this is the Comica microphone. The next thing is if you wanna use more of a powered solution and get even better sound quality, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now this one has a couple of different levels, so you can change the gain on the back of this one so you can get more or less gain. Pro tip, what I would recommend doing is turning this, the volume on your microphone input almost all the way down on your camera to allow the microphone to do all the work and that will also cut out all that hissing or feedback noise you get in it and then just turn it up on the microphone. Of course, you always wanna to try to make sure your levels no, uh, don't go above the minus 12 decibels, but that's up to you. You can see if it gets too hot just by checking those different meter ranges. But the nice thing again with this one is you just plug this one into your hot or cold shoe, whatever you have on your camera or your rig, which we'll talk about in a minute. Plugs right in. This one does have a battery. This uses a nine volt battery, but it lasts. I had this battery in here for about a year and I still haven't had to change it. Pro tip. Make sure you check your batteries often though. You don't wanna be in a long interview session and your battery dies and then you gotta to go to scratch audio, which means some other source because it's not good and your client will not be happy with that. <laughs> now, one of the new exciting microphones that came out this year is this that I'm using to record right now on my Canon M50 is the Rode Wireless Go. Now I've actually got this in my pocket, plugged in through a lav mic, which you can do with or without the lav mic, so you can see it here. And this is so convenient because it's completely wireless. You're not tethered to anything. You don't have to use these shotgun style microphones. You can go anywhere you want and still pick up your audio. So I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can get this too. This is a great affordable option. You can see it easily plugs into your camera just using this 3.5 millimeter jack, plug straight into your microphone, it works great. Now here's a pro tip for you, if you don't have an internal microphone input into your camera, you can use an external microphone recorder like the H1 that we discussed, plug it right into its mic, it's lying in on it, and you can also have this anywhere walking around, talking, recording directly into your input device. So you don't have to plug it directly into the camera, but you then do wanna make sure you sync the audio between the two devices and that works great. One of the other nice accessories for the A6400 is this small rig hot shoe adapter. Now what this does is, if you notice on the A6400, the great thing is, is they've allowed this flip up display so you can see yourself, frame yourself when you're shooting Works great for vlogging and studio and professional work so you can see the display. But the problem is, is if you try to put anything into your hot shoe up here on the top, while you're using the display, you can no longer see the display. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having a flip up display. Now, of course you could dangle this or put it somewhere else. But the thing that I like about this small rig is it's only a $20 item. It plugs directly into your hot shoe like this. And what it does is, is it creates a side mount cold shoe. And now when I flip up this camera, I can use any microphones or adapters or lights or anything. And now as you can see, nothing gets in the way. Now small rig has two uh, variants of this. One goes to the left, the other one goes to the right where it goes just over the dials. I like the left one though, because then I can plug in my microphones and things over here on the left hand side and I don't have cables coming back around it. So I thought this was a perfect solution for that. And then one last thing is if you guys are mobile or on the go and you're doing some darker events, you wanna bring something like this. Now what this is, this allows you to get studio quality light in a very small area. Now of course, because it's so small, it's a direct beam light, which means you can't really diffuse it a whole lot. There's not a lot. You could use a small diffuser, but it's not super powerful enough for that. But what this is good for is if you're doing self interviews or have someone next to you and you wanna be able to highlight your subject or your products, you can literally take this with you, put it on a tripod stand, put it on your cold shoe, have it next to you, have somebody hold it, and this will highlight anything you need or the subjects you're interviewing. So this works out great. It's low cost. This is the newer CN160, 
works fantastic. Now, typically I would also say you can get yourself a monitor, but there's a couple of things you can do with the Sony a6400. One is of course you can use the flip up display. Two, you can use the software so you can have it remote into your phone or tablet. Or three, you can use an external monitor like I've used before with the Ninja or the Small Focus HD. And those will also allow you to get the image off of this. So that brings up another point with the a6400. This does have a clean HDMI out, meaning when you plug this into an external source, it takes all the information off the screen. So if you wanted to stream and use like an Elgato HD60 and use this as also a webcam, you can do that because there is nothing on the display, no information. You can take all of that off or on so that works great. If you guys have any questions or comments or like to see more videos like this, do me a favor, click that thumbs up. And if you're feeling really generous, hit that subscribe. And that's gonna do it for my video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys on the next video.